All right, it says we are live. So what's going on, guys? This is Chris, that home theater dude. I am also here with the Audio Misfits. We're going to be doing a wrap up of Expona 2023. I'm going to introduce the guys on the podcast and gals. We have Jordan, Haterade Cowboy Cinema, right here. Look at that, looking vocalicious. That focus, though, is so crisp. (laughs) We're using a Sony lens. We also have Cynthia, the Audio Bell. And the funny thing is, is we all live next to each other. So this is pretty cool. Um, (laughs) Nothing like an audio show to bring everyone together. Thanks, everyone, for for joining in. Make sure you guys subscribe to every one of these people's channels. Um, This is on my channel because I figure we have the bigger, uh, the the biggest audience and reach with this one. But make sure you guys check these guys out. They're actually giving out some great content as well. Uh, Thanks, everyone, for for joining us. Thanks uh, for Jordan and Cynthia for joining as well. Thank you. Let's get into what you guys think of... Expona. You want to go Jordan? first, Cynthia? Or me? Okay. Um, you so go I first. guess I'm the rookie here. So yeah, that was my first time going to Expona. I will say that it is very fun. I wish I would have gotten a chance to do a little bit more, I guess, viewing and listening since I was kind of running around and mainly like filming and shooting. But it's an awesome experience. There's, I mean, I was talking to you know Cynthia during the during the Expona, there's so many companies, speaker companies that I have never even heard of. <laughs> I didn't realize that there was that many speaker companies out there, but it's it's an it's an amazing experience. There's a lot of a lot of knowledgeable people, a lot of the brands. You know, you talk to them, and they're just really down to earth. They've got some really cool gear, super expensive gear, and then there's also <laughs> some some you know affordable gear, which, super affordable gear too. We'll, yeah, it's, it's we'll talk about yeah. So. All right, so we just heard, heard from Jordan. Cynthia, take her away. Uh, uh, I had kind of mixed feelings about this. So this was my fifth audio show and my second Axphona. And I don't know. I mean, I wish that I got to listen to as much as I wanted to, but I I didn't make it to everything I wanted to. And the last day, I really felt like I was audio speed dating to get through the rooms I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> so to speak, and and didn't really get to just kind of sit down, relax, you know, smell the roses. But I would say Saturday was probably the best day, even though it was the busiest. I got to kind of enjoy some things. And uh, it, as far as it being a mix, I, I would say like there were just people going in and out of rooms and it was super crowded. Um, the best way I can describe the PS audio room, for example, was it was like somebody threw a piece of cheese and there were a whole bunch of, of mice trying to go after it at once. You could hardly get in there. But so that was I couldn't really listen to those speakers, but others were were super respectful and I was able to just kind of walk in and they would let you listen. Some of them, you know, people were talking. So that's why I say it's kind of mixed, but Overall, it was it was really about the people and the relationships that uh, are made there. And I got to see a lot of people I hadn't seen in a few years. So that was really nice. Cool. So long time uh, subscriber, first time commenter, I guess. Uh, we don't really, really do the like live streams of this stuff, to be honest. Um, it is kind of cool to have like minded folk that we can bounce ideas off of. But I think that with this Expona, how it was different than any of the rest of them, it looks like, I don't want to say Hi-Fi is back, but it was a lot more people than last year. Last year, people were still really gun shy with, you know, all the the safety protocols and stuff like that. What did you guys think about that? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm still kind of, you know, conscious about that. I, you know, I wear my mask whenever I'm walking around. Obviously, when I'm you know filming or shooting, I take it off. But um, I there were I saw quite a few people that were still wearing the mask and everything. I I will say Saturday was obviously the most. There was that's when there was the most people. You know, Friday people are still working, and then Sunday a lot of people are trying to get back to you know to their cities and their homes and stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I I do feel like, and maybe it's just because it's my first time. I didn't really feel like it was overcrowded. Like most of the rooms that I went in, some of I them, <laughs> some of them were, were, were crowded, but most of the time when I went in there, there was maybe like three or four people in there. And yeah. So uh, like I said, I didn't get to see all of the stuff, all the rooms. So maybe I just didn't go in the right rooms where there was a crowded, but there were a few. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't know what rooms you went to. <laughs> Go ahead, Cynthia. <laughs> no, that's all I was going to say. <laughs> what I remember is how freaking hot it was, right? So uh, apparently the next day after the show, it was supposed to have like a massive cold front. Um, I know that yep. there was a lot of delays in people's flights and stuff like that, but I just remember how the body heat of everyone in there, that's always an issue, but um, it was just hot and it was uncomfortable. <laughs> so <laughs> lugging around all that gear is not easy. Um, people probably don't want to hear about our problems with the show, <laughs> but uh, what, what, I, what I experienced there is that there were a lot more people there here than last year. It was nowhere near the type of droves that went there in 2019. That was an a massive, amazing show. If you guys can never get out to these things, pay your freight. I mean, it's it's simple. You guys just get a flight out there, drive out there, just go and see this stuff. There is This is a very limited opportunity for you to sit there and demo every single thing under the sun. Like it, it, it is eye-opening how different, different speakers sound, different systems sound, different cabling sounds. Oh, watch out. Don't, don't, don't even want to say anything about that. <laughs> but it, it, it is, it is definitely, if you guys take this hobby seriously, this passion seriously, do yourself a favor, get out to one of these shows, whether it's Munich high end. Um, so sad that, um, Rocky mountain audio fest isn't happening anymore. Expona is probably the biggest one that we have here in the United States. So check that stuff out as well as you guys know that Jordan does home theaters. I do home theaters. There's different shows like that. So without further ado, we have a slideshow to let you guys know about. So we're just going to go ahead and pop that in here and we'll start talking about it. That first slide was supposed to be uh, Giordano's pizza, but apparently it got ruined. I don't know how, but uh, <laughs> what did you guys think about the Focal booth? That was, that was one of my favorite rooms, specifically the, the Tiva line, the new speakers. So if you guys haven't heard, Focal released some new home theater gear you know, budget friendly and we do quotations because that's what they say, but they're not, they're trying to get more people into an affordable home theater experience, but still have like the high, 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 high quality and the high quality of Focal. So they re released some new Tiva speakers. They've got one of their speakers has like a laser beam technology for Dolby Atmos. That room sounded really, really good. Like I've, I've heard all the Focals at the grid hi-fi, you know, where Chris works stuff sounds good that was the first time i've really heard it in a home theater environment so if you're looking to get into you know some really high quality speakers at an affordable price check out if you can check out those those tiva lines um that was that was a really cool room everything in there just sounded really good cynthia you're up next right so i thought it was the most eye-catching room as far as you know the in-your-face sign. It looked like Hollywood, right in front of <laughs> right? your right in front of your face. Uh, I had never heard. What booth is this before. again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, I had never heard Focals before, and I thought they sounded really great. I uh, I thought that they absolutely needed the room that they did, which it was a huge room that they had these in. Yeah, that that is a tremendous challenge. So, what did you think about the audio signature with them? Uh, well, I didn't get too much time to listen to them, so I I couldn't really say. I would have to have a little bit more time listening to them. All right, so what I noticed is it was very Focal in there. Um, if you guys have ever experienced this brand, it is very earthy, natural, um, a little bit uh, on the warm side, but no, not overly warm. It basically just has soul, and it's crazy to think that they have these speakers that are entry level, but the performance that you get at them is just far over where the rest of these, the rest of these companies start with their entry line. So it's hard to, to, to put these things in a box, especially the, the new, the new Tiva line, they have the new Vestia line and they have trickle down technology. So I'm gonna show you guys this picture again. These speakers right here are in the middle tier for the Utopia series. Uh, they have trickle down technology that's, that comes all the way from the grand Utopias, which are $280,000 for the pair. <laughs> So all that stuff trickles down. Every time they learn something, they bring it into their lower tiered line, and then they keep building the brand and learning and learning and growing. So that's what I think is so cool about them. But yep. next slide, we have the new, those are the Contas and the matte finish. We have the Maestros. Uh, we oh, have me setting up my camera I, I for some out reason. Of you. <laughs> <laughs> As I was walking out of the room, I saw you setting up there, so I snapped that of you. Yeah, this was before we got introduced, so you, you were just taking pictures of, of just strangers. No, that was afterward. <laughs> oh. What did you guys think about the Pearliston room? 
So this this is a picture that I took. Um, did did any of you guys get to hear the perlison? Yes, I did. I, w I wasn't super impressed. Really? Are you serious? Yeah, hundred percent. This room was probably the only one I liked, but at the same time, you have two massive <laughs> subs right there to help. Yeah. these studio monitors the, the ones that had towers was very underwhelming well i will say that they don't ever really turn it up very like it's it's very mellow in there with that they have the music like it's still it still sounds good but yeah. i i keep asking them and i know that this isn't really that kind of show but i keep asking them i'm like hey man when are you guys gonna have like a like a home theater set up and basically what eric told me was that you know they're trying to work with some um show they're trying to get more showrooms to where they have like a home theater experience that you can go listen to them but i mean i i liked them i didn't really get to hear the towers if very only much. someone had a showroom they could put them in <laughs> <laughs> I know. hey man you need to you need to talk to your boy and see if he can get some i was gonna ask you about that but i might yeah they uh I, like i said i don't i didn't really get to hear the, the towers very much but the r series so sounded good and yeah, i heard that, them that, you know, that was at, really SCD. really nice expressive room yeah. What do you think, Cynthia? Well, uh, I kind of had the same experience when I first went into it. I was very unimpressed, but like Jordan said, they were playing some really mellow stuff. And I Yeah, when are they gonna throw on some Wu Tang? <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do. It's the wrong so, crowd, I guess. <laughs> I, I kinda left and um I had a friend that we were going to go up to SVS and that room was oh, man. pretty full. So he was like, let's go check out the Perlis and subs. And I was like, all right. I didn't, I didn't realize they had any subs. I guess I didn't notice them in the room because the music was too mellow. So we went back in there and uh, I told the guy to play the bassiest thing he had. And he did, but he gave me a disclaimer that they were going to be super balanced. But I, I thought that they sounded phenomenal they were the best subs that i had heard Ooh, that's that's an endorsement yeah well i have c research subs or a c research sub at home <laughs> and I, I really like that but when i heard these it was just there's something magical about it's, them. It's, it's not easy to do subs for music yeah uh, are these the the that's legend the, series or are these the that's the r2 so i was also shot that room that's the legend r2 r200 uh -huh. and i believe it's the anniversary edition so you know they're they uh they only make so many of them and they've got serial numbers on them so i liked focal was in my top two but the r200 stole the show and i don't know if you guys heard it but that was my first time hearing them those things absolutely rock like the bass that those r200s output is insane like they played a couple clips they i forget which ones they had um, i think i have a video of it coming out but i knew Shout that there out. was no so <laughs> i knew that there was no sub in the room but I looked at Ryan, which I met him at CDO. We worked together before. And I looked at Ryan. I'm like, dude, are you sure there's not a sub in here? And he's like, no. Like, yeah. Wow. For it's, me, it's, they it's, stole it's the show. It's trippy whenever a bookshelf has that that low base extension. It's crazy. And if you guys know anything about these polks, you know, a lot of their their ethos is to have this weird spherical, hemispherical type of pinnacle that radiates the base evenly throughout the room. And I think that's what really helps with with these speakers. Yeah, so they said so that's their their turbine cone, I believe that's what they call it, and then they have the 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 radiator. Yeah, the radiator um, is what I'm talking about. The turbine cone yeah. basically just keeps the 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 speaker the, the actual driver from flexing. Yeah, and then on the back they had a they had a special port that base apparently that's what they said yeah. allows them to get that base. Yeah. Um, yeah, Polk was one of the ones I didn't get to, but that that's beautiful looking. Yeah, they're really really cool speakers. Um Next, we have Bowers and Macintosh, you know, like ham and cheese, you know, it, it always goes great <laughs> together, chips and salsa. Um, what'd you think? So, oh, wait, wait a second. Let, let's actually talk about this room real quick. These are their hybrid drive amplifiers, right? These are the new ones that I never even got to hear. Like, um, these are ooh. brand new. It's hybrid drive to where it's tube in the front. It's like a mullet. It's tube in the front and solid state in the back. <laughs> Uh, it basically gives you it's it's a mini 901, which is their flagship uh, amplifier. It's 300 watts all tube, and then uh, 600 watts um, solid state. So this is basically half of that. Um, and they found out that what they do it in just one unit itself, it's easier to have that relationship whenever it's half of the tube capacity or correction. 
the solid state is half or the tu the tubes are half of the solid state capacity because it's easier to balance that way if you guys do it by yourselves you guys have multiple amps you'll probably run into signal audio buzz hum different stuff like that so that's kind of the idea with with them making this one i had all the information in the world for them uh <laughs> i no longer sell this stuff so it doesn't really help me to to push it but i mean i i really enjoyed the way these things sounded i mean it's, it's hard to make a set of bowers sound you know terrible but uh th these are probably some of my favorite set of bowers i yeah. still haven't heard bowers oh what what i yeah, still haven't the heard them now it was if you the, like bass you'll love bowers yeah, okay they sound good yeah yeah th that room sounded really really good I I think they had it up a little bit too high, um, but it sounded really, really good. Like with whatever music they were playing, it was it was sweet. It was pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's probably Will Klein's mix. That guy, that guy knows tunes. Yeah. All right, let's check out what we got next. More Bowers, go figure. <laughs> so that, yeah, and that's the same room. So they had that off to the side. This and... is the the Best Buy suite right here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so they got uh, over to the left. I don't think I got the the other ones in the picture, but over to the left, they had some, I guess there's some new speakers with some, their new, what, what are those, uh, the tweeters called? I forget what they call that design. Torpedo? Torpedo, yeah. So they had all those on display. And yeah, the, there's a rep that, that was, you know, talking to me or telling me about them. But yeah, that's the first time I've seen all of them right there, so. I mean, there's there's some hardcore loyalist Bowers and Wilkins loyalists, but for a reason, man. They sound they sound pretty good. Yeah, they're they're pretty cool until your kid comes up and whaps that uh, <laughs> that, that torpedo <laughs> off. Oh, are are they that that sensitive? They'll come uh, off. Apparently, they're easy to knock off. Ooh, that's oh, not good. Oh man. So this is the uh, Tiva room from Focal. Uh, again, this is based in that massive area that they had. Uh, obviously, Focal and Name and Vacoustic, they 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 go together. A happy trio um but even just having these in a kind of technically a home theater environment mm -hmm. um in this space was eye-opening and impressive what do you think cynthia did, did you get a chance to hear the stuff in here no so this is what they were hiding in the back mm -hmm. yeah this was the big oh. loud crazy demo that they would play like every uh every five minutes how did it sound was it good very good. nice tight articulate they're using the focal or correction the the name astral in uh -huh. the back so okay. uh, if you guys don't know what that thing is it's basically um it's an advanced processor that has gobs of power like we're talking 300 watts a channel 250 watts a channel for the non-critical um sections and it is 12 channels ready to go so this is like this is like an avr on 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 crack like the thing rocks if you guys have ever heard one. Is that the I, one I, you were talking about, Jordan, at the show? Uh, no, that was uh, Trinoff. Oh, okay. I didn't even know that they made uh, that. But I was going to say, so speaking of one of the rooms that I said was packed, the Focal room, like any time I went in there, it was like I had yeah. to, it was, it was super, super packed. It was like there standing was, room only. Yeah, there's people sitting down, people standing around, yeah. people in the, it was crazy. All right. Looks like we have a comment. Let's put us all on the screen. Let's check this one out. Could you answer a maybe newbie question? I'm looking at going with the Bluestown node is I have a Denon 6700, which isn't decode MQA audio, which doesn't. Would you connect that to the Denon? E I'm going to defer the, on this one because I don't know. Very the Blue much Sound Node doesn't absolutely do extremely high res, but it is a great way to get into high res audio. Probably your best bet is to just break out your laptop, get a title account, and then just use your HDMI into your unit itself. That way you use the, the DAX on board on the Denon. Um, those aren't crazy sophisticated, but if you want to go that route, I mean, I think that that's going to give you a lot more of that. Uh, that high quality that you're looking for. So thanks for asking that question. Jay Clampett Investments. Is that uh, from the Hill Beverly Hillbillies? <laughs> <laughs> is, that it is. Really, is that what that's from? I think that is, yeah. All right, so what we got here? These Polks again? No, th that was I can't tell. P, um, PSB? Was PSB. PSB. Yeah, yeah, the Canadian company. That sounded that sounded really good. I went in there just randomly. Actually, I think I went in there when I was doing the doing my little live stream, 
And I, this is either before or after. And I went in there and, and I was, you know, just taking some B-roll. But I was like, man, this sounds good. Yeah, they have that isolation system. I'm not sure if you guys can see that they're down at the bottom. But it's kind of like an isolation system that really helps get that. Um, it really helps decouple these these big uh, speakers from the ground. You get a lot more clarity in your, your low bass detail. So I think that that is one thing that they have going great for this set of speakers. I've heard these before. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with them. Now, That's is that what I noticed too. Is that ISO acoustics or is that their own proprietary? No, it's it's, it's legitimately. Well, I, I think actually whenever I first heard about these things was at CES 20, 2022. Um, they were doing a training with us whenever these things first came out. I think that it was made in partnership with ISO acoustics. I'm okay. not 100 percent sure. Um, so I don't, I don't want to say the wrong thing. But yeah, and I know Focal had Focal had them in there too, right? The ISO acoustics. Was it yeah, Focal? so so yeah. ISO acoustics is, is is part of that that you know conglomerate that is uh, Focal Name USA. Oh, um, didn't know that. Yeah, so um, ISO acoustics, Vic acoustic, um, oh, okay. music fidelity. Um, a handful of other things, obviously name, I'm pretty sure I already said that one, but here's my favorite room. The, the room that I owe it all to 2 million plus Man. views guys. Where, where was audio? That? <laughs> I remember whenever, whenever it was 2019, I shot this video. I think they were on like the sixth floor, man. So they were in there with like the cheap seats. Right. Mm. And I guess like the, it, it just became very popular for them. So now they're, they're up there on the number 16. These, these guys are up there. You blew them you up. Know, really, really doing it. Oh yeah, I remember know, this from years ago. That's that was your thumbnail, right? That was the thumbnail from that 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 video that I did. But like, if you guys know anything about these, like they're made, they're all carbon fiber. They were made from the same type of people, the engineers that did the Red Bull planes. So oh. this has a crazy amount of performance in it, um, and speed is their mantra, right? Carbon fiber fa equals fast. Carbon fast. So these <laughs> speakers are some of the fastest speakers and they're omnidirectional that I have ever heard. And they claim that they, well, I'm not gonna say that they claim. They claim that they are very fast, okay? Uh, so this goofy little uh, thing right there in, there in the middle connecting them is actually where your mids and highs come from. And then your, your low base comes from these actual drivers that go into the cabinet, which is extremely inert. Um, I love where, these things, man. Where are uh, the drivers? The drivers are at the top and bottom, like they're connected by that. Uh, it's it's if you turn it sideways, mm -hmm. that platform, that bridge. Yeah, that's where they're connected. Interesting. So how Crazy. does it like how does it how does it sound like? What is the sound signature? Sound signature is extremely neutral, extremely detailed, very fast. So decay on okay. these are next to nothing. Wow. And it's, and it's because of the omnidirectional. Yeah, I, I I really think that having them to where it is kind of. Uh, one is, you know, facing or uh, firing up, which is going to help with uh, phase impulse. One's firing down, which is going to help gravity bring that note down. So on the differences in that, that pistonic type of approach to it, I don't know how these guys made them, but all I know is how incredible that they sound whenever they do. So that's my kind of workaround in describing how these things sound. Um, but what do you guys yeah. think about how they look? It look, to me, it looks like a, a mountain climbing carabiner, but I, I think it's super cool. I, I would still buy these if I had the cash, but... It looks like a big C-clamp. I do not. <laughs> yeah. What And what's the price on these? Uh, I think this is 194k for the pair. Really? I thought no. They, it seems like there would be more. They might be 94k. I think I made that mistake last time at Expona, <clears throat> and then um, the owner got kind of perturbed at me. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. So these are some of my favorites, <laughs> these Whoville speakers. Um, people always, you know, comment on how, how weird Boxes. they look, but these are easily some of my favorites. It's just crazy how good they sound. Now, those look reminiscent to your Eskindos that you have. Uh, A little you know, bit, yeah, but this is concentric, right? So my waveguides on my Ascendos are, um, they're non-symmetrical and they're kind of in an oblong shape. This is designed for a specific purpose. You have your base port in the middle, you have your massive radiator up top, uh, your waveguide as it would be. Um, these don't sound like, check it out, I'll just show you guys while I'm doing this. <clears throat> People always complain about the horniness of how these speakers sound. So like, say if, if I have my hand in front of my mouth like this and I'm talking, it projects and radiates in a very specific manner. 
this does not. So they look goofy. They sound amazing. Did anyone yeah. else get to experience these? I didn't no. get to experience any of those, man. Did they you not go to the top floor, man? <laughs> no, I think I. Uh, what floor was it on? Sixteen. No, I think the highest I went up was fourteen. Nah, you got to go to the top and walk down. I was working around, man. Yeah, that's what everybody so, was saying that they were doing was going all the way to the top and walking down because that's the how you elevator. do it. But uh, and as a side note, yeah, like if you tried to take the elevators, it was there was like very small moments where there was maybe a few people there, but it was like, and if you got on the elevator, it was like stopping at everyone. So there was a couple of times I was like, man, I'm just taking the stairs. I think you it's... took the wrong. <laughs> I think you took the wrong elevator. Mine went from eleven to sixteen. <laughs> yeah, that you talking about the express? Yeah. Yeah, I took that and it was packed too. At least oh, when I was well. there. But you weren't there on Friday though. Friday yeah, it was... was Oh no, it wasn't. No, I was there half the day. Saturday. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. <clears throat> I thought All Saturday right. was worse. Yeah. So speaking of some of the most expensive speakers that we had KLH. right here, we're going to some of the least expensive speakers. Mm -hmm. These bad mamma jammas. These are KLH. These are the seven series, correct? Yep. These uh yeah. guys. Yeah, the, those are these the guys brand sound ones. good. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I got a video coming out on that one, too. Um, Me, too. Oh, nice. But yeah. they're using a Bryston preamp, the BR-20. That's no that's no slouch. And they're using the Bryston amplifier, the 4B cubed. Um, both of those are a solid a, 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 a solid system. And to me, it's it, it doesn't really make sense to be using Bryston on, on, on KLH because KLH isn't known for being expensive. But the audio quality that came out of these things was superb. I mean, did, did you guys experience the same thing? Yep, I would say that was my other like if, for top three, it was that was probably number three. Um, that sounded really really good. I believe he was. I don't remember if he played Eric Clapton or he played some type of rendition. I was like, man, that sounds like super like super detailed, uh, very crisp at the high end and kind of warm sounding, but not like too warm. And yeah, it 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 sounded really 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 good. What'd no, I think, didn't get Cynthia? to hear him. What did you hear, man? What floor was this? You, you, you'll get to them. They're later in the uh, site. They, they, they were on, 14, they were on right? the sixth floor. Sixth on the sixth floor? Well, All right. Oh, yeah. All right. So this was yeah. on ground level, so you probably got to see these, right? I didn't get to hear these either. I didn't oh, see those. <laughs> that was on ground. Where was that at? But my local dealer loves these. He swears by them, so I know they must be good. All right. So these are rock ports. These are uh, oh, some of the higher end up ones in the rock port series. Um, if you guys don't know what this stuff is, this is where it's at. Like this is hi-fi, right? Um, you do have a crazy amount of detail and clarity and low bass extension. I mean, you can, you can legitimately listen to records on this thing and it sounds like streaming. Yeah, I don't know if that's good for some people. I don't know if that's bad for some people. But to not have a crazy amount of hiss and pop and mm -hmm. all of the extra stuff that comes with vinyl, to me, I love that stuff, but it, it can be minimized. But these, oh my God, they're so balanced and uh, they're very expressive. What size drivers are those? Are those 10s or 12s? I think they're they pretty big. I don't know. I don't know. But these are the Cygnus line. Um, and then they also had, uh, what was it? Rockford audio was it an uh, audio importer for all this stuff. So I didn't catch the names of the amplifiers in here. It says acoustic signature. So I'm guessing that's the, uh, phono stage up top. Yeah. And that's another thing that I noticed. They had a lot of, uh, those record players were like super, super, super fancy. I don't think I saw like a, a like a actual normal record player in there. I don't think I did either. Yeah, uh, my favorite is still Air Force One. It's always in the, or I think it's called Air Force One. It's always in the exact same room. It's in the the Noble, Divin Sense, the Goebbels, or whatever they're called. Mm -hmm. This year, it was the Divine from Goebel, I believe. But they also had audio research for amps up there. The guy was kind of a jerk, too. I was sitting there trying to record, um, and he was being kind of rude. Uh, <laughs> so I just kind of scooted out of there. I'm sure Jordy will see that whenever he's editing the video. Um, yep. But Air Force One, it's crazy. Like it sucks the uh, record to the plinth, and mm -hmm. there's what? no hiss, no pop, no nothing. It just sounds like you're actually listening to a, a live recording. That's it's crazy. crazy. That's amazing. Like it's like it's like it's like an unvinyl scenario. 
So let's check this out. What did you, did anyone get to see this? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, this, this was right next to that last room that we showed you. But that I was the million it. dollar system, right? This was the million dollar system. Yep. What? Yeah. Yep. I didn't get to see it, but I edited the video. So I, I guess I got this, but no, I didn't get it. I don't even know, dude, I didn't get to see any of this stuff. Cause I was running around, you know, trying to film and get stuff done. But what floor was this one on? The ground First. floor, Jack. <laughs> Where at, man? Because well, I was on this the ground was right floor, next like, to the, the. This was right next to this. It was like Sean the very next F room or something. And, like and I don't even I think know it was D, was. and this was in C. D? Oh, okay. So, anyways, if you guys don't know, these are the Estelon Extremes. Apparently, this hasn't <clears> been. <throat> I believe this hasn't been shown in America yet. Uh, Estelon has a very classic type of appearance. You know, it kind of has that uh, you know monolith type of a, a look to it. And the cool thing is, can you guys see my cursor whenever I do this? No, no. Okay. I don't. Anyways, so the black part raises up and drops down with 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 the control with the motorized control. You do this so that if you're if you're standing further away from the speakers, you can help actually shape these things to your room to best get the best experience out of it. Also, not only that is that the tweeter itself actually goes forward and backward on the z-axis so you can actually custom Whoa. tailor this thing time alignment perfect to your specific liking to your specific room it's crazy yeah if you, and if you want to see it the grid hi-fi youtube channel just posted that today right yep and then it'll so. be out on that home theater dude in the morning uh so i can give this video some time to shine uh for you guys so that everyone can watch it um yeah that's crazy i didn't know that they did that I was yeah, watching, I was and, like, whoa. Yeah, it's 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 a crazy pe uh, it's a, pe a crazy piece of kit because this is it's all uh marble, right? Wow. So the thing that takes the longest in making these things are actually the paint. That's what get, gets held up the longest. It is a massive undertaking to paint these things because the paint takes so long to cure and they want to have it absolutely perfect for the customer whenever they buy it. Now, you said that this is a a million dollar room? What Yes, so these 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 blocks right here in the center are actually uh, stereo amplifiers. So what they did is they took each stereo amplifier and then they bi amped the system. So the black part of it right here has its own uh, channel on the amplifier, and then the mid bass drivers, which are in the gold part, or actually the you know the the the, the gold part itself, that's on another channel. So this thing was ran out from the preamp stereo and all the XLRs go into there. And then they basically made a uh, match set. But uh, yeah, these amps, I believe are a hundred and I think they're 100, 135 each. Ooh. Man, that's yeah. a house. Wow. <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it's a spicy enchilada, but it definitely sounded uh, the part, you know, he played Santana for me. He also played a couple of other things. They weren't afraid to turn these things up either. So, you know, rest assured, Mr. M Mr. Billionaire, whenever you buy these things, you know, you're, I, I, I'm pretty confident you're not going to pop them. So you think you're getting what you, what you pay for with them or? That is an interesting point, right? So a lot of people, what they do is, and I, I've seen this, especially with that video that I did. Whenever something is extremely expensive, people want to, people want to justify hating on it because they will never buy it. They will never afford it or they have a perception that they will never buy it or never afford it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm never going to be the type of person, you know, to talk down or anyone or anything, you know, what, what you can afford is what you can afford, you know, and if you want it, go get it. Um, but I really feel like there was a lot of that in my, my video and i kind of understand. I'm not sure if you guys have the same audience, but that's kind of how people treat certain things that are very expensive um it's it's just kind of a hard thing to 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 justify like would i buy it if i had the money sure i mean it's an incredible system why not um i don't have the money so <laughs> that's just the way it is right now and do you guys feel any different does does anyone else have any hot takes on that um and actually someone kind of asked a question about that yeah, in the like comments questions. but um i i'm more of the and i know this isn't always the case but i will say at some point i feel like there's a diminishing return and maybe everybody has different hearing everybody like you know chris was saying is subjective they have their own opinions 
there's for me there's just like even if it was some of the best i just i even if i was a millionaire i don't think i would want to spend that much on the speakers i would rather yes. spend that on <laughs> right <laughs> i would rather spend it on other stuff to supplement my theater but hey to each his own if you can afford it and that's what your ears like that's what you can do yeah i mean but i'm not gonna hate on something and be like oh well why does it cost you know a million dollars for you know two speakers and some and some like who cares right do what you want what about you cynthia well so i don't know i feel like the way they were showing them was a little bit um I don't know. I felt like it could have been done a little better. They might have benefited from a traditional demonstration throughout the whole show rather than kind of the cocktail party style thing. Because when I walked in, um, it was just kind of like that. There was there was a whole bunch of people in there listening to random music. I didn't know that there was a motor function on it and all of that crazy stuff. And that would have been really cool to see. But yeah, uh, it, it would have been cool to kind of like break it up into like almost like training sessions on the 15s. You know, hey, we'll, we'll we'll play you guys some music. You guys can enjoy it, get your fill, but we're gonna let you guys know about the features in this and justify why you know there there is this type of price tag on it. It's not just crazy expensive just to be crazy expensive. You yeah, know, and like I, I don't want to hear a sales pitch every time I go in a room, but that I I would have wanted to hear all of the details of for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see here, and that room was always packed. I, I went there several times um, throughout. Well, one because it was on the, the 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 first floor and it was easy to get to, <laughs> but I remember like it was it was just one of those it, it kind of like felt like home you know like it, it's it's like enjoyable, so I wanted to go back to that one and experience it a couple more times and I think that comes through with my enthusiasm on the video. And real quick, I had a question for you because editing that video obviously it's completely different, but I could tell like I was like man, there's some bass on these speakers. Like what was the what was the bass output like? Those things actually go down to 15, I believe. 15? Wow. Those, wow. And, and they're, they're, um, yeah, my, my ears, if you guys didn't know, no, probably no one knows this. Um, I've been having massive problems with my ears, and uh, it pressurized the room enough to where I, 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 like, I'm hypersensitive right now. And I, I could definitely tell um, that there was some notes that you can't hear, but you feel it, right? Mm -hmm. So that there's a chest slam. Like you feel it from your toes, like your heels all the way up to your shoulders, you know, like it's, it's a, it's a really cool thing, but let's go to the next one. So now we're going from ex extremely expensive back to the tried and true. Check out these guys. Clips. I didn't get to hear that room. I didn't hate them. <laughs> I usually have problem with like active speakers, you know, that are fit to to do a specific price point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought that these things sounded great. People people love those things, man. I've been seeing videos on them, and like people love them. Yeah, I love Klipsch. I just something about the sound. It just I don't sucks. Know. I can't I, I can't sell these. Crutchfield has the freaking market on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they that's probably like <laughs> one of their one of the number one sellers, man. But I've I haven't heard too much Klipsch. I'm not a big horn guy. But I have heard them at the the ones that I've heard at the grid, you know, on I, I think if you have them on the right equipment, they sound really good. Yeah, we we, we kind of uh, we, we kind of do things unfair there. We, we, we put them on <laughs> a very expensive, very awesome tube amplifier and tubes and clips. I mean, that just goes together like, you know, uh, spaghetti and meatballs um, to quote um, butter and biscuits. Butter and biscuits. There you go. Now, now the Southern Bell's coming out, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that audio research. Yeah, audio, audio research, research and the 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 clips are. It's it's like an assassination attempt, man. Like you go out of there, you're gonna come away with something. Wait, did you guys hear the clip horns when you were there? Yeah. Yeah. What did you think about those? What did you think about them? We've been chatting up a storm. I'm, I want to hear more from the 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 audio bell. Well, I, I love the clip horns, so there's not much else I can say about that. If I could have any horn speaker, those would be what I would have. They're the less, they're the least, and, and again, I'm gonna say this this term, they're the least horny of that line, right? Probably my favorites in the clip heritage series is always going to be the Cornwalls, but all of them have their pros and cons, and it's cool to be able to experience every single one of those, like back to back to back to back to back. Um, the K horns, they need to be in the corners, right? 
So that's kind of the thing. They didn't yeah. have them in the corners in the room. So you're kind of leaving a lot on the table whenever, whenever you're trying to show off that piece of kit and to, to each their own too. Like even at my shop at the, at, at the grid, we don't have them in the corner because they're in a massive room. Like we can't do it. It's just not going to happen. Uh, but still the expressiveness that comes out of there, very natural, very, um, very down to earth sound. It is a little bit, I'm going to say on a neutral scale, here's warm, here's bright. It is probably 20% on the bright side, but yeah. still with that brightness, what you're trading off is you're gaining more soul, more clarity, more the kind of like you are there type factor. I don't know if you guys can hear this. You probably can't, but I think there's like some big hail outside. Is that hail? I can hear that. Yeah, yeah she said that. Uh, so if you guys don't know, if, if 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 her camera goes goes dead, there's like a tornado coming through. So uh, like if, if we lose the audio bell, from. hopefully we'll find her again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's check out the next clip. JBL, did you guys hear these? No. I actually walked Good by God, them several times, and I didn't get to didn't get to go in there. <laughs> Okay, so these are the new L100s, right? So if you guys don't know, these are kind of like retro tech coming back. And that really feeds into the idea that the receiver itself has like old school toggle switches and stuff like that. It actually has a wood facing on the side. Man, I hope your car's not outside. Uh, it is because our garage is full. So. Oh, mm. RIP. Not much we can do about that. <laughs> So we have these gloss black. Um, these are brand new, right? They're coming out, I think, at the end of the month or sometime uh, coming out shortly. But these are gloss black. They're not the same as the uh, new, the, the classics that just came out recently. So this is a little bit of a difference. Easy, easy HT Tech says hello. That's, what that's up, Ike. guy? What's up, Ike? I met him at hey. uh, Cedia. Aw. Uh, Jake Clampin Investments. He keeps asking about other stuff. He says he's a super troll. And I am a super freak. <laughs> yeah, and he asked a so, question about uh, affordable systems. A All right, let's check out. Yeah, yeah. Let's check out uh, the next one. Oh, well, anyways, I, I got to I actually got to make a video about this. It's coming out shortly, I guess, whenever Jordy gets around to it, whenever he's not doing podcasts. What did you um, like about the sound? Besides the retro look, I mean. Right? I, actually, the, the weird thing is it's, a, it's like a mind game, right? Because that foam is like studio foam in front of the speakers. And if you put it up to your mouth and you talk through it, there is a decent amount of, of change in your vocals. They voice these things specifically for the purpose to go through that material. So if you have them grills off, it's going to sound completely different. Wow. If you have them grills on, it's going to sound completely different. So it kind of has that ability for you to buy a set of speakers and have them sound like two different sets, which is kind of cool. Now, Did you this, like it better with it on or off? I like them better with them on. It To me, okay. it, it sounds more controlled. Now, this might be a dumb question, but those look very similar to some Klipsch speakers. Well, that's the thing. All the speakers back in the day looked the same, right? Like It, it, it was the tried and true recipe. Like If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's the Any other work, comments, Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> no, good. That's just the way they looked back in the day, man. Like they kind of kicked them up in the corners, kind of angled them towards your your listening position, and then you know you put your your cocktail on top of them. So I guess the real question is, who's the who originally came out with that to start that design? I don't know. Probably Paul W. Klipsch, Colonel. Colonel. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, these suckers. These. Man, man, I missed that one too. What is wrong with you guys? Who uh, saw anything at the show? <laughs> no, I, I, I was took working. This picture. I got to hear these. So every single so I there there was someone that said something. It left a it left a lasting impression. I was at Cedia 2019 and they had that power cell. I don't remember what the hell it's called, but it's basically a battery backup. It's almost like a strom tank, right? It's okay. a battery backup for your the power regenerator is what it's called. It sucks the AC out of the wall. It converts it to DC, pure DC, clean DC, and then it changes it back into perfect sine wave AC. Wow. So whenever someone told me that, you know, this is the only thing that I put as I, I use as power conditioning for my unit, nothing else that I've heard makes a difference. That l had a lasting impression in my mind. And I've always wanted one of these things ever since I heard that. This sucker, this for the 20 amp version, 
if you guys look at this thing right in the middle, for the 20 amp version, a single one of them is 10K. Just one of those. For one oh, of them, but it has wow. gobs of outlets on the back. So you can hook your entire system up to it. Or if you're a baller, you can get two of them and uh, you know, kind of have things on their independent chains. Now, now but, the big one at the bottom, what is, what is that? The big one at the bottom is their preamp, I believe, because the, the rest okay. of stuff are the streamers and DAX up top. And the uh, pricing? I want one. Yeah, it's, 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 whoo! That's a what's sweet the, set. How what's much? the price on those? Uh, all, P all PS Audio prices are online. It's, it's, it's all internet direct. I don't even think they have dealers for it. Um, but, uh, did you guys hear the speakers? Yes, kind of. Uh, oh yeah, you're talking about people throwing like cheese or whatever in there. <laughs> this was the room that I, I went to that it just was packed all the time. It just seemed like no matter what you go in and you try to sit down and then somebody takes your spot as you're trying to get to the middle. But mm. from what I heard, they were astounding and I absolutely love them. And yeah, I, I kind of like the space like look they've got too. Yeah. And what's what's up with the uh, the feet? Like, is it some type of circular? I can't tell. Like, are those, like a robot. Are those... No, 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 no. So, so what they had or... is they had they had they had both of the sets there. Um, you you won't you don't see them, but they're kind of kicked off to the corner. But they had these on furniture pads. So basically, oh. you scoot them oh. over on the carpet and scoot okay. it back over. So they kind of hot swap these things, you know, in between the shows, so you can get a oh, decent nice. uh, appreciation of, of the different systems. But uh, but yeah, these these were probably I'd say top five, top five uh, room. And yeah. Easy HT Tech wants us to ask or wants us to answer what are our favorite speakers at Expona. So I guess at the end, whenever we're wrapping this up, we'll say our top fives. But this was definitely top five for me. What do we got here? These were the Atom speakers and the <laughs> Atoll Electronics. They had three different ones. They had the GT1, 2, and 3. And you can see kind of they've got the, the lowest one is the bookshelf is the GT1. And then in the middle is the two. And then the last one's the three. But uh, I love the piano finish on these. But more than the looks, I loved the sound. They had extreme clarity on the top end. I could listen to some stuff that accentuated lows. And the bookshelves had just this big sound to them. And they sounded like floor standing speakers. So I really liked the bookshelves. I got to hear them graduate basically to their mid-tier tower speakers. And they kind of sounded like their bookshelves on steroids, basically. Uh, I did have some questions around, around the mids, maybe. Because, I mean, it is a hotel room. And I couldn't really tell if there was anything weird going on there. But overall, some of the uh, the cleanest I've heard, like a female vocalist, for example. So I really like that room. And I, I went back twice, actually, for that one. Interesting. I think this is actually one room that I probably skipped. <laughs> the one And room. you're giving me a hard time. <laughs> oh, well, one is not <laughs> every room. The room you didn't room. make it to. <laughs> I would have right, thought you made it to every room. Now, I have else. a question. Did any of these rooms <laughs> let you play your own music? Like, yeah, so they, they a lot did. of them have like records that you can thumb through and be like, hey, hey, man, can you play this track? Or they, they took requests. But some of them, they're, you know, they're kind of uppity and they want to do their own thing. They don't want to expose their weaknesses. It depends what their agenda is. <clears throat> yeah, exposing weaknesses is one. Maybe the one person really wants you to understand what the speak speakers are capable of. But overall, I, I kind of like a mix where they show me what they want me to hear and then they let me hear what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. That makes All sense. All right, guys, you guys talk about this one, and I got to pop out and grab my charger for one second. So enjoy. Go for it. I don't know what these speakers are. Did you take that, Cynthia? Yes. I don't. Oh, my goodness. I cannot remember the name of these. Um, they were on the ground floor, and I heard them from outside the room because they had such a big sound, and I went in there. And I just, I sat in the front row and listened. And this was one I, I just kind of stayed in there for a bit. They were, they were super beautiful. But for the life of me, I can't remember the name of these. And it's an interesting design because it's, it's almost like the, the woofers and the tweeters are like almost outside of the actual cabinet. Yeah. But it's kind of, it's kind of weird looking. It's kind of popped out. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure that there's some super fancy explanation as to why they, 
you know, they're they're designed like that. I don't know. Yeah, they um, kind of got the the drivers going diagonally there too. Yeah, but it's a ported speaker, so I mean that looks. I don't know if that's like a. That's an eight inch, or what? Were they pretty big, or would they look kind of small? Uh, they were pretty large. I okay. think I might have another picture. Yeah, and that's the thing, I guys, with some of these some of these pictures. Like, you don't really get a sense of of scale unless you're in person. Yeah, it, it's really hard to to be able to see that. But these these are fairly large, for sure. Oh man, made it just in the nick of time. Huh. Uh, they, they were the Arilics, unless that's the electronics. That might be the electronics. Arilic. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. The ATC Tower series. ATC. Okay. I've heard those before. Uh oh. Uh, that's Legacy Audio, right? Yep, yeah. This. Got this. The... Those sounded this, good. Oh yeah. Uh, this one I took a picture next to to kind of scale for size. So I, I'm you... I'm five five. They were taller than me. Yeah, those those were I think they were right at either my height or a little bit taller because I was in there. Actually, I think I think that's I got the most B roll in there just because they had <laughs> so many speakers in there. Um, and they were like works of art. They were beautiful. Yeah, those things are. I, I will yeah. say I'm not a I'm not a big fan of the how glossy all their speakers are. Like I just don't like gloss, and I don't know if that's just because of my home theater background. I don't like you know gloss in a theater, but. Some some of those things are like super 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 shiny, mm -hmm. but um, I mean I guess if you're just using it for two channel, you don't it's really care about art, the theater. So when they're off, but, it blends into your right. decor. But this um, guy, but yeah. it also makes it hard to film too because you got the you the know. entire room was very dim. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When is always one of my favorites. Hmm. Like there, there are very few systems that I've heard that match this. Really? What do you guys think? Didn't get to hear that room. Oh my uh, God, you guys. I, I loved <laughs> what they were playing, but they were only playing piano music. So, and they reproduced the piano beautifully, but that, that's all I got to hear. But I've heard that they're, they're really good otherwise. It's just, you know, that's the only thing I got to hear. So I don't have much else to say about them. Oh man, I'm, I, I stand alone on this hill. I will die on this mountain. All right, the dollies. Everyone heard these because these suckers would crank this thing up like every fifteen minutes. And yeah, and they they actually I thought that they sounded really good. That's probably in my top five as well. Like never never heard those before. Obviously, most of these speakers I've never heard before, but very intimidating. I'm six one, and those things were taller than me. I got a picture in between them. Those things are huge, and they. Like I said, I thought that they they sounded really good with the uh, the NAD NAD streamer, and I think there's a it's uh, NAD Jack. NAD. I know. I always <laughs> well, you, you know, what's funny is that's what my friends call me. They call me NAD. It's a long story, so I always say NAD. But yeah, NAD. He's I, trolling. I, I, I don't think it's a long story. <laughs> no, it is. We'll gloss over it. <laughs> Has to do with the ex girlfriend. Uh oh. Now, these, what are these? These are cool looking. Did you guys see these? No. I think I did. And These are up? the the plasmatronics. What's with the? Uh... Nope, definitely did not. Is that so? The helium you tank. know more about this than <laughs> yes. us. Go on. Uh, so these were invented by a guy named Doctor Hill, and the funny thing was he was actually at the show, and I was around the corner, and he and I think his wife was trying to find the room so they could go listen to his own invention. Hmm. And I I directed him to the room, not knowing that he was the one who invented Ooh, these. Nice, but. These are 40 plus years old. Uh, okay. As far as the the invention, he just brought them back to the show, I guess. And the, the little purple thing there, that's actually the plasma. The big tank is a helium hmm. tank. And I don't know technically how it all works, but I know that the helium tank has to be changed out every 300 hours of listening. So it's not did, like changing out your conventional propane tank. Did you Did you get a video of this? Oh, uh, we did get some panning of that room, yeah. I want to know what, how the helium tank integrates with that. It's very it's I know. plasma jack. I don't know. <laughs> I know that uh, they have some stuff online on schematics and how everything hooks up. But I, I just thought it was super interesting and not not something that you know I'd have in my house, but something I thought I should get on camera. Yeah, some something combustible. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, did he say how old those speakers actually were? Did you say that? Uh, they were the the tweeter invention is forty plus years old, and I don't know if this set themselves are forty plus years old, but I know the technology is. That and plasma has been in there since the changed. Reagan administration. <laughs> <laughs> it's seen its days, you know. Look at this hippy dippy room. Wow. Did you guys see this one? Uh -uh. I'm pretty sure I did. But... Okay. So first time I walked, this is the Odyssey room, by the way. First time I walked in here, because I had a viewer uh, who really wanted to see this room. And I went in there and it was pitch dark, except for some candlelight. You could smell incense. They were playing Pink Floyd. So Sounds I... about right. <laughs> <laughs> you can smell something else, too. <laughs> Hippies. Right, right. It was like, I'm either walking into a, a you know, the 60s here, or this this is a religious experience. I don't know. Are those some drums on the floor? What is that? Like the uh, bongo those, drums or something? No, those, those are <laughs> those are their fake candles. Oh, man, these guys. All right, but, next one. But this is when but, somebody but, opened but the But see door. what I was talking about? Go back real quick. Like, everybody has this high-class record like player. Like, they're just... I don't know how much those things cost, man. I don't even know where you get some of those. Yeah, Pretty much every single room that you go to, everything was on display and everything was on sale. So if you, if you were paying attention like to the actual room itself, like they have like leave behinds. So you're like, damn, I really like that. You can grab it and you, so you can know, hey, you know, these are the prices. This is what I can expect to pay for this type of, you know, performance or this product. Uh, but I, I, I have no idea how much this stuff costs. Uh, a lot of... My favorite is coming up with uh, the record player. Well, I guess second favorite because we already talked about I think Air I Force is, One. But... <laughs> not the shoes. Not the shoes. Yeah, the record player. So what do we got here? Martin Logan. Oh, so uh, yeah. Are that these was the 13s in... or the 11s? So I don't remember. I, I actually have a, I have a pretty lengthy video that I shot because that's... Uh... Not that one. Oop, that I skipped was, over that, this one. Sorry. That, that was the secret Magnapan room, Chris. I didn't hear. I didn't see this one. No, not, you heard not, one. You not, heard them all. Oh, you skipped over this one. These were the diptiques. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're talking about the other ones. Yeah, yeah. With Wendell. The, these, these diptiques had to be my favorite at the show. No way. Hand, hands down. Yes. Really. Yes way. Well, is right. it pl plainer speakers that have bass? So and of course I'm gonna love them. Martin Logan. So, so which ones are these? The 13s or the 11s? I don't remember which one those are. I have, uh, like I said, it looks I like a... the small small cabinet. So I'm I'm leaning towards to say that these are the elevens. Yeah, but he he because the thirteens have a bigger he, box. He took the bass drivers out of them, right, Cynthia? Uh, well, I I think that he crossed them over so that he could use the woofers. You see the triangular things contraptions over in the side there on the yeah. very right. Yeah, so his invention, th this is, uh, well, not his invention, it's a conglomerate of different engineers at Magnapan who invented and basically put together these dipole woofers that can kind of fit in the corner, and he's got one on each side, and the point of it that he was, Wendell from Magnapan is trying to get across, is that they can be played with any dipole speaker, regardless of whether it's Magnapan or not. So he brought a competitor speaker to the show and basically had a secret room that people had to go and seek out and find. <laughs> and that, that was kind of his gimmick, but it was, it was mainly to show off the technology and the fact that you can buy electrostatic speakers if that's what you prefer. And you can buy their dipole woofers when they come out. Right now, it's a prototype. So, yeah, he's Wendell is very, very good at explaining. It. Like, I oh, said, and this I, is I a have, better picture of it. Check it out. Boop. Yeah, I have yeah. a very lengthy video where he described all of that stuff and those. So that was the first time I heard Magna Pans at at uh, the Texas Audio Roundup because they were there in Austin. And all right, I guess I was snooty and I glossed over this room. <laughs> well, so you had to schedule out a time because there were so many people oh line, lined yeah. up to go and, and hear them. People were, people were getting mad because they'd walk up in there and they'd try to open the door and his wife would be like, oh, sorry, you know, let me get you an appointment. They're like, appointment? I'm not, no, I'm not doing that. Like, they people were getting mad. I was like, dude, just chill out, man. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> yeah, go, go to that other room and uh, <laughs> bang on them bongos. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bob Carver, great set. We got the tube oh, cage gorgeous. right here. Do, do you guys like tubes? I love tubes. 
Chris Jordy. actually introduced me to tubes, you know, working with them at the grid and they're, they're pretty nice. I like, I like, it's not something that I would like buy for myself, but I like that the way that they sound, especially paired with, you know, the clips and those, those focals that they got in there. Like they audio research of focal sweet. Yeah. So, so like, it's crazy to think about like the, <clears throat> the tube companies because not all tubes are, are made the same, right? Not all solid states are the same. Not all speakers are the same. So it's not easy to box something in like that um, and kind of have like a blanket statement because there are some tube companies that just straight up don't sound like tube companies. You still get a lot of the benefits and none of the drawbacks. So that's kind of hard for some people to wrap their heads around. But tubes, man, you, you got to get on it. You got you to check it out. And everybody says they're warm and I agree but I guess I don't even know how to describe what warm means when it comes to tubes. I just, I know how they sound. It's like it's syrupy, to... like yeah. velvety. Caramel. Uh, and you put yeah. the right tracks on them? Man. Yeah. They... Buttery. Maple <laughs> syrup, you know? Yeah. Maple syrup on a biscuit. Oh, man. But isn't right. that funny, though? The best way to describe sound is through food. There's a window, yeah, right? It makes me hungry, what? too. I need to go get some Whataburger. <laughs> okay. What room was this? These were the Janssen KLH 95s. It was a upgrade huh. upon Janssen's previous model, the KLH 9s. Uh, unfortunately, when I went to the room, I only got pictures for the most part and got to hear one song because the right speaker had gone out on, on David Janssen on, I think it was like Saturday afternoon. So mm. there wasn't really much he could do about it. Um, the cat stepped but, on the remote. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. But... The, the cool thing about these, though, and the technology, and I'd love to hear them someday. You can see that they have those woofers on the left side of, of that panel where they're exposed. Oop. They're the same kind of technology as what Wendell had in his room. They're dipole woofers. And the, um, the other portion of the speaker is electrostatic. So he has a dipole matching with the dipole as well. There's kind of this trend that's going on with that technology right now. Interesting. I wonder, curious. Okay, let's check these out. Oh, well, let's, let's check this out, Macintosh. Ooh, <laughs> what speakers are those? This looks like... Golden ears. That is uh, golden ears. I kept, I kept meaning to go, because they were on the, uh, on the lobby for it. I kept meaning to go in there, but the door was always closed. Mm -hmm. They're trying to keep the the the, the cold in, man. It's <laughs> too hot. I kept seeing audio the heat out. I kept seeing audio vice come out of there. I was like, man, what are they? Why's the door always closed? Well, I mean, yeah, they got a million it, employees, so that's true. <laughs> it, it, it was weird because they had some tables set up there for some other stuff in front of the yeah, door, and it was did. hard to get back there. But I just kind of went back in there, and I guess that was that was okay because i went in to listen to them um they were the trident 66 they're going into production here in a few months and what i really like about them which apparently i learned is characteristic of golden ears is that they have a really low bass extension for floor standing speakers yeah that golden ears pretty sweet sound really good yeah and i think coupled with the macintosh components it just it really brought out uh the best in those speakers for what they could sound like in a hotel room. Yeah, but that, that also brings up another point. Um, I don't remember. Yeah, I do remember seeing these. That also brings up another point. Like people always talk about with Expona how, you know, how it is like it is legitimately you're walking into a tiny little hotel room to hear this stuff, right? But you're used to that by the end of the show. So your ears are already used to how it's going to sound and what you're going to get and what are the limitations in the room. So then you could still, it's one-to-one, -one. you know, a lot of the rooms are different sizes, but it's still a lot of the same type of components in there, whether it's just the walls, the construction, the floor, the, you know, the furniture, whatever it is. So I kind of see it as a level playing field between all of them, except for whenever you're going into these big, massive rooms like this, right? Cause yeah. this kind of cheats, like some of the, the ceilings are a little taller. Some of the rooms are a little longer. So, uh, you know, okay. some of the speakers sound different in these types of rooms. Now, did y'all did y'all actually hear this room? I did. I'm pretty not. sure I did. Okay, I actually have. I actually just edited a video today, so I think tomorrow that video is going to post on Home Theater Reviews uh, YouTube channel. But we got invited to uh, kind of like this private event on Friday, where they had after the you know 
the show closed, they had us come in there and they had like some sake. They had Ooh. some bunch of different. It was it was kind of cool. It to me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I I didn't get to so dad because jokes. there were so many people in there. Dad jokes because there were so many people in there. They didn't really have it turned up, so I didn't really get to actually hear how they sounded. But what I heard, even though it was very low, was very cool. But they have a that, that turntable right there is it's brand new. That thing is. That thing looks. I forget how expensive it is, but it looks super, super nice. But uh, I like that was the, a really cool room. I like the photo stages that was in. I think it was one of the Macintosh rooms, but like it legitimately had like bodybuilder weights Ooh. on the bottom. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! That that like, it, like... It, it, it was like it was like <laughs> off off frame. It was like this tall, and there's like a, a bar, like a barbell, like in between the the platter itself, <laughs> the plinth, and then the actual weights are down below. So like the entire thing is just sitting there spinning, like. <laughs> The, the 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 amount of links that people go through with this audio stuff is just really funny to me, but this one yeah. right here, this one probably top top five turntables. I really like this one. Who Triangle this? Audio. These Triangle are pretty audio? cool. Never heard of them. The guy always puts on a really <clears throat> good show. He, he he cranks some good tunes. What are they? Do they have speakers too, or what do they pair them with? I don't think he does. Oh man, I missed that room. But yeah, I wanted to. so pretty cool looking room. I, I took a lot of pictures from last year. Sorry, dude, I never sent them to you. <laughs> but I took a lot of professional photos. Um, uh, so hopefully I'll be able to send them to him shortly. This right here are the Debbie LA. I think these are the Phantom Ones. So these goofy little things, man, looks crazy. Sounds really, really cool. It's a French brand. Uh, they're really into gold right now. So as you see the gold accent on the Phantom One, as well as they have a... Um, a sound bar that's just kind of off mm -hmm. in the background there. They have gold leaf as the top of it. So that is a, I think a 21 driver Atmos enabled um, sound bar. 21. Yeah. I keep, I, I forgot to look for that one. Uh, Cause I wanted to, I've been wanted to hear, hear their speakers, and especially their sound bar. You guys will see a video coming out with this one shortly. Cynthia, did you check these out? No, I had no idea these existed. So yeah look up at the airport because you guys will probably see these things like the okay. like once okay. you see them you can actually start seeing these things like what they're, they're 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 in the, the the commercial um field right now interesting i didn't hear the car audio thing were they actually doing demos here oh they weren't playing anything but what they were kind of showing them off where was this it was this... in the headphone room i think or this no this was in the, was in the this was I... in like the buy sell trade area right huh Expo Hall. Sorry, I think my microphone went down. Didn't even know they had any cars there. Can you guys Car hear audio. me? Yeah, I can, and we then, can hear isn't you. Isn't there a Tesla? There was a Tesla. I had to take it out of the PowerPoint because it took it over 50 megs. Sure did. So that was at the that was in between the uh... the audio bell, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Picking Ultra up a right. till the end. <laughs> 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 yeah, so the NADs were yeah, the NAD the... masters. <laughs> We're, with the, da guy. the dollies. Keep it, keep it G rated. <laughs> <laughs> Those are these things the kick, man. Like, uh, no, they sound if you good. guys have ever heard these, like, it is a very powerful integrated amplifier. Uh, has an amazing amount of DAX and clarity with the system as well. So, uh, if you guys are, are in the market, check this stuff out. I think it's a great uh, bang for buck investment. Um, are there other things out there? Sure, but everyone likes their favorite things. You know, everyone likes their favorite flavor of ice cream. Do you have those at the grid or no? We do, yeah. Okay, I thought so. Yeah. We sell more name streamers than anything, but this is a pretty good, this, this, this is a really solid unit right here. This will power, like the, probably some of my favorites are the Vivids. Those will power those with ease. <clears throat> so we're rounding out the end of the show here. Uh, just to let you guys know, um, it's not just about floor standing speakers. It's not just about turntables, audio, cabling, all that other stuff, car audio, apparently. Um, headphones are a massive market that's on the upswing right now and none other than these guys I've legitimately had 50 gamers call me about these Odyssey Maxwell it's pronounced Odyssey not Odds. <laughs> that was a um, joke man <laughs> <laughs> I pronounced them that way when I yeah, first heard so, of them so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> everyone does <laughs> Odds. yeah but uh, the, the sound on Odds are, are pretty sweet. Um, the Odyssey makes uh, an incredible set of, of, of um, headphones from very entry level, you know, innocuous, 200, 300 bucks, 
all the way up to, you know, the thousands. But really the idea is to make things affordable and to make things accessible to anyone that needs them. So if you guys want a gaming set, these guys are really, really comfortable, really, really cool for gaming. And they are pretty much sold out everywhere in the United States right now. They're about to re-back up. Wow. Now, I have a question, Chris. Go on. Would you say, like, okay, I think it's pretty fair to say that a lot of people will say, okay, there's diminishing returns on speakers cost, you know, from, you know, a $5,000 speaker to whatever, 100000 What about headphones? Do you, like, I haven't heard Odyssey yet, but what are your thoughts on their affordable price, $200 versus the, you know, $1,000? Like, is there a big difference? So, I mean, like, really, in, in, in my line of work, like, I, I can take the sales hat off. Like, I legitimately don't care how much you guys spend on products. Like, it, it doesn't get me excited or anything. My job is to legitimately find what you're looking for and make that happen for you. So, a lot of people get wrapped around the axle whenever stuff costs more or whatever it is. Um, I don't subscribe to the idea of the law of diminishing returns. It's not a freaking law, man. You just, it, it's just expensive. You know, um, things get more expensive. Things cost what they do for reasons. Um, uh, and some of this business things are expensive for no damn good reason. So, um, it's, it's kind of one of those things with headphones m to me, headphones are a specific price point. You can spend $50,000 on a set, right? You still have two ears you hear headphones differently than you do a set of floor standing speakers than you do a set of bookshelves. Right. You don't get the body feeling with headphones. You do get an amazing amount of surrealism and clarity and cerebralism with headphones because it's directly piped into your ears. So to answer your question the long way around, there is a difference in between all this stuff. Really, where, where you get off, like some people get into, go. people like to go swimming. How far into the deep water do you want to go? It's really up to you, um, and it's really up to your comfort level. So there is a difference, but, you know, do people care or do people want to do it? It's really up to the person that's going to actually pony up the money and pay for it. It's it's really what, what, they, what value they instill in the product. Cool. But check it. Odyssey... Mise, Mise are kind of a an upper tier type of uh, of headphones, right? So we just shown you guys Odyssey, which are really really nice. Mise, they're really really cool. They're handcrafted. They have like race car type technology in them, like fine um, a European automobile influence. Like even these these ear cups, they're they're extremely comfortable and they have Alcantara on them. So if you guys have ever been in like a, a high-end race car or like a sports car or something, it has that super uh, soft suede in it. It is extremely comfortable to have around your face. <clears throat> so these are super cool. Now, are these more niche than Odyssey or are they on the same level? I'd probably put these as more high-end because okay. their starting point is more high-end. But, you know... To me, Odyssey is a little more um, old school, but modern at the same time, because they do have those regular, you know, type of cylindrical type of cups for your ears. Mm -hmm. These are more like the elongated, more like a uh, more European type of aspect. So it's they're probably um, they're probably closer in performance than anything else. But I would say that these would would definitely steal the show if, if you were to do a A B comparison. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Did any of you guys hear any of the headphones? No, I walk by there probably every day, but I just, I, I never went. <laughs> Who <anywhere>. cares? <laughs> I, on, I, like, honestly, for me, like, I don't really care very much about headphones. And I'm one of those people, like, I know some people, and depending on if you have kids or a wife or whatever, some people will get, like, expensive headphones to listen with their home theater. Like, I'm never, ever, ever going to do that because to me, I just, like, what's the point of having a home theater? Um, to each his yeah, own. Yeah, you might but, as well just pour gasoline and light it all on fire yeah. at that point. Yeah, I, I I don't really care too much about it. So that's part of the reason why I didn't go in there. But I know that that's a completely different niche where, like like you said, like gamers and stuff, like, yeah, they they love those stuff. But I, I didn't get a chance to go in there. I don't know about Cynthia. Uh, I went in there, but I didn't listen to anything that was in there. I listened <laughs> to The Abyss, which were somewhere on one of the higher stories. And uh, those are pretty pricey. The uh, 
the Dynafies and then the Phi twelve sixty six, I believe is what it was. The twelve sixty six being their flagship used to be five thousand dollars back in I think two thousand eighteen when I first listened to them, and they've they've gone up significantly in price since then. But bar none, those are the best headphones I've heard, and I'm I'm convinced that I won't hear anything that sounds like those again. So I had to go listen to them again just for that. Nice. Yeah, headphones are really, really cool. Um, that is, an, a, to me, it's more of an affordable way to get the audio clarity and detail that everyone's been missing because let's face it, these freaking things, they ruin what you, you listen to. This is an audio ruiner, right? Because it's so cheap and easy to sit there and just put something on YouTube, put something on your Apple Music, and it comes through these teeny, teeny, tiny little speakers. And even whenever you cast it to something like Bluetooth or AirPlay, like you're still missing so much on like you're, you're leaving so much on the table. And if you guys have ever listened to a great set of <laughs> audio, whether it's with, you know, a, a great pair of speakers, doesn't matter the price, a great set of amplifiers, doesn't matter the price, a great set of cabling, like whenever you have a well-balanced system, the different things that you can listen to and appreciate like you can legitimately have music that you listen to for decades and it sounds completely different whenever you listen to it on a, a well-rounded system lol screw headphones huh jordan <laughs> hey man i just <laughs> I, never been, I mean these are probably the most me, right? expensive headphones. <laughs> i got these suckers for free at sony man they just, they just gave them to me Cool. So I guess it's going to wrap it up for, uh, I guess, the Audio Misfits podcast. I, I, I don't think we're calling it that, but, uh, you know, uh, hopefully if you guys enjoy this, we'll, we'll do it again sometime. Uh, I look forward to working with all of you guys in the future. If you guys like this comment or if you guys like all any of this stuff, make sure you guys comment down below. Uh, this is going to be, well, obviously it's been a live stream for the last hour. We're trying to make it an hour, but, you know, you always go over. Uh, I'm that home theater dude. Make sure you get to give me a like and subscribe. We have Jordan Haterade Cowboy Cinema right over here. His channel is skyrocketing right now. And then we have the audio bell. She's fresh out of retirement. She's back at it. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to subscribe to her channel as well. Um, check us out, guys. We'd be happy to help you out. And obviously, we, we'd be here in the comment section too. So if you guys need anything, we're not above responding to comments. Um, we're not those type of, of people. So if you guys need anything, we'd be happy to help. Does anyone want to say anything before we go? Real quick, uh, maybe we can just keep it to number one, but what was your favorite speakers? I think someone asked that. We didn't. Oh, snap. Like, what right. was your number one favorite speaker? Unless you want to do five. If you got the I time. say top five. Top five? Okay. Cynthia, go. On Dip the spot. Teak. Dip Teak is number one. Uh, Acoustic Energy AE520 Tower Speakers, and then the AE100 MK2 Bookshelf Speakers, the Atome GT1 bookshelf speakers, and then I think I named five. Maybe I just named four. I think you're a bookshelf gal. <laughs> I didn't used to be, but maybe maybe <laughs> she's <they> been converted. <laughs> maybe I've been converted. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Jordan, what do you got? So top five: Dolly, KLH, Focal. I'm trying to think of what what my you know. The number four one would be and this isn't in any particular order except for number one um yeah i'm, I'm trying a lot of the rooms i just didn't get a chance to really listen to but i will say that my number one my favorite one which stole the show was the poke r200 i know that's like way out of the league of all these other you know thousands of dollar speakers but if you if you have a chance to hear them man those i was impressed hot take hot take so I'm going to do what everyone would probably do in my position. Uh oh. The audio research and the Wilsons hand down my favorite. It's, Those it's sound good Exponent oh, turned this. me on to Wilson way back when. I always hear that people have ear fatigue well, the owners of Wilson, they always say that they, they have ear fatigue with them. I have never had a second of ear fatigue with them. I've always enjoyed every single second that I have something to demo like that, especially going through an all tube system with audio research and the ref 10, um, the ref 10 preamp. It, it is an abyss of detail and clarity. So if you guys have ever had the, the chance to check that one out, highly recommend it. Um, that's number one. Uh, the rest of these are in no particular order. The PS audio, 
that room was uh, a showstopper. I do not remember the name of this one. I think Jordan has it in my my master video, but they were playing um, the Phil Simon, Paul Simon song, the do 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 do. I can feel it. Phil Collins. I, I heard that That's on. What uh, it is. Yeah, I heard that in one room too. That sounded amazing. I can't remember. Which they one had one these was. massive, like, and I'm talking massive. Like, I have a 50, 65. I have a 65 inch like uh, TV back here that I do my editing on. It was roughly the same size of this as a tube amplifier. And their speakers <laughs> in that room were just sublime. And again, like I'm, ha I'm I was having like ear problems during the show, but you can definitely tell the audio clarity that was coming through and the dynamics, like you just straight up felt it in your chest. Oh my God, it was just so good. If someone knows that one, leave it down in the comments. Hopefully I'll make a pin comment of it later of the exact room, but that one was supreme okay. for sure. Uh, obviously, Focal, that was a great one. Uh, Bayes Audio, love those. avant Guards. that's it. That's it. That's it. That's going to wrap up today's show. We're uh, 20 minutes, 21 minutes over we, on budgeted time. Again, if you guys want to check us out, we have Cynthia, the audio bell. Thanks so much for joining us. Of course. Thank you. Thank you Jordan, for having me. Jordan, Haterade Cowboy Cinema. We have him right here. He's also another Texas boy, so you guys will see in us yeah. uh, mob the streets with some more videos coming up shortly. I am that home theater dude. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining the podcast. Thank you, all of you out there checking us out wrapping up expona 2023 we all have videos coming out very very shortly so make sure to, to stay tuned for that that's all i got for you guys we will I, I will post a video in the morning it will be up in the morning so be ready for that easy ht home theater said thank you he You're is a nice like. dude um jay clampett investments we answered all your questions that's all i got for you guys that is it i'm gonna say end broadcast and we are done guys hang on we will chill for a second Later. Thanks, guys.